So today and tomorrow we'll be dealing with the life of the anointed. So that when the anointing comes upon you on Friday, you will know what that means. And you will know what is expected. The life of the anointed. Our text again, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 4. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's the beginning. Not a man of God. Not a woman of God. Not any mighty person. That's not the beginning of a call. That's not the beginning of God's life on earth. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Not doctrine. Not church. Not anything. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. What does the Spirit of the Lord do when He comes upon you? Because the Lord has anointed me. So what the Spirit of the Lord does in the life of somebody that the Spirit comes upon is what? Anointing. When the Spirit comes upon you, the Spirit anoints you. So the Spirit of the Lord carries. What is anointing? We have talked about the Hebrew word Meshach, from which we have Meshiah, Meshach. Meshach comes from oil, and Meshach is smearing oil. Any of you smeared oil on your body today? Especially ladies. Use oil on your body today, did you? Oh, praise, you don't want to raise your hand. So you anointed yourself today, that is what it meant. And you know, you don't anoint yourself with oil for nothing. Do you know that? For a true woman, it's intentional. It's for purpose. The oil affects your, your skin texture, the health of your skin, and so many things. The radiance, the youthfulness, so many things. So the oil you have been rubbing on your body consistently eventually affects you. You see, people rub oil after some time, they become white. Become brown. That's oil. Am I communicating? So the rubbing of oil does something to you. So eventually, after a long while, you'll become the effect of the oil that you have been rubbing. <laughs> so at the natural level, that's anointing. So because when we use the word anointing, sometimes it just sounds very spiritual and abstract and far away. But for me, I, I, I believe in understanding. You have to understand it so that you know how it applies to you. When the Spirit comes upon you, He rubs you with the oil of God. <laughs> when the Spirit of God comes upon you, what will He do? He rubs you with the oil of God. The same way that oil does different things to you. And the oil you rub can make people run away from you. Foul smell. What kind of oil is that? The same way when the Spirit of God comes upon you, He rubs you with the oil that has effect. And when the Spirit of witchcraft comes upon somebody, he, the spirit of witchcraft rubs that person with different oil so that somebody who has who has the spirit of witchcraft upon them and rubbed with several oil walks into a family before you know it quarrel that is as a result of the anointing this is why breaking it into teaching makes sense. Because we say, oh, that man is an anointed man. Which spirit is upon him? Say, that woman, very anointed. Yes, that is not a problem. That means there is oil upon the life of that woman. But what spirit is responsible for that oil? Because that's the basis of the deception of today. That people just follow people. 
He knows everything. That man will give you a word. He sees everything. He knows everything. That means the spirit was upon him and has rubbed him with the oil of seeing things. The problem is not seeing. He's seeing correctly. But what spirit is upon him? And the scripture says, tests all spirit. Because every spirit will produce corresponding effect. Because every spirit carries a specific oil. So this is the operation. I told you something, I think it should be on the first day, that the administration of God on earth is what Satan has corrupted. What we call the devil originally, the, the, one of the chief ones in the heavenly places. One of the chief ones. He was made for that realm. To honor God and serve God at the rebellion. They were cast down. So he came with the blueprints of heaven. With the architecture of the supernatural. He was, he was cast down to the earth. He was not meant for the earth. Man is meant for the earth. But he came with the architectural design as he saw it from the presence of God and then corrupts it in every area. Because he knows the function of money, so he corrupts money. People now think if you don't worship Satan, you cannot have money. He knows the function of singing. He corrupts it. So people think if you don't go naked and sing rubbish, and worship Satan, you cannot sell music. So if you're going to worship, or me, I mean, if you're going to music industry, Satan is worshipped. Because songs come from the spirit. Song is not intellectual. It's spiritual. And it's corrupted. So if you look at all the major areas, what you could call the pillar, of the expression of God's kingdom on earth that was handed over to man whose blueprint was in the presence of God the one who fell who lost his place there coming with that understanding positions himself in different principalities and power and corrupts all this area family look at what is happening in family in certain parts of the world people, children are growing up and they are made to think that a man and a man could be the parent because they adopted to see that two men are my parents and that's the only thing they know so they now feel surprised that they have other friends that they have mommy and daddy they don't, they don't understand why the family is the central the pivotal the main place that everything is to be expressed and it's been corrupted. So you see, my sister was warning me and said, don't be talking about the Pope, leave the Pope alone. So when we now hear in the Catholic Church, the holiest of holies, that the highest authority is talking about that people will come to accept same-sex marriage. Sir, that's satanic. And I dare any Catholic to shoot me to death. Oh, I dare. Why? There are Catholic priests or bishops who will talk, who should talk about it. No, if you do, you will be excommunicated. Because as a Catholic, you cannot speak against the Pope. Sir, that is satanic. It's not from God. And the Catholics, Christians should pray. Because the Catholic Church has been respected as an authority that when the whole world is boiling, when the Pope speaks, everyone listens. And when that is shaken, sir, a shift has taken place. I'm saying this thing because I was called by God. And I owe my life to God. And I will report to God when I die. I've told you my experience. How I came to this place. So I fear nothing. I don't, even fear. I don't worry about my life. I dare any Catholic. I dare anybody to rise and speak and say I'm talking nonsense. I said that's satanic. Because they call of God's expression on earth is touched. Jesus was born by a woman. And God had to bring a man to oversee it. 
even though it was not a biological mother. That legs should pray. Something has happened very negatively. So a dark cloud is hovering. And not only Catholics should pray, Christians should rise and pray. Something very, and the whole world, every, everywhere seems quiet and things are just going normal. The point is that we, know, we don't even understand what is happening because everybody is looking for a car to drive. This to this, we are talking about eating and drinking as a sense of Christianity. Something is changing before our eyes. I can give my life for what I've just said. I'm speaking before God. Because I'm convinced. By the grace of God, I have the Spirit of God in me. I read this Bible. There are no two Bibles. So the devil corrupts all this area. The church is the administration of God on earth. That should be the custodian of the heavenly blueprint. Where people are to learn how to marry. How to do politics. And the church has been corrupted. Corrupted with all sorts of useless doctrines. That robbed Christians of power. Teachings that deny people walking in the supernatural. All sort of things. Everywhere you go to academics. In the area of academics, corruption. Where do you have the seat of secret cult? It's in the place of learning where young people are grown. So you can see. Everywhere you turn to. So this is the time of the rising of the last generations. They call it end time. And the end time movement is not about being blessed with a car. Being blessed with a house. And that's the deception of Satan. The end time move of God is not about solution to problem. The end time move of God is raising people who will provide solution. That's the only call I can answer. If that is not the call, I don't have reason to live tomorrow. I don't have reason to breathe tomorrow. That is a time that the gospel and through the spirit of God will raise boys and girls, men and women, who will go back to the supernatural blueprint. How God wanted it at the beginning. I'm giving you this as background to let you know the life of the anointed. We said something in one of the things we said that what the anointing does, when the spirit comes upon you, he rubs you with oil, the oil of God, to set you up to do specific things for God. Samson was, was rubbed with the oil of God by the Holy Spirit to deliver Israel. Saul was robbed with the oil of God as a king. As the first king. Because they wanted a king who would go out in battle with them. David was robbed with the oil of God to replace Saul. And to lay the foundation for the eternal rulership of the Christ on earth. Because they said that Christ will be born of David. That the Holy Spirit came upon, they all robbed them and gave them specific mandates. Specific. Yesterday I made very deep statements that needs a lot of explanation. I'm not against the issue of fatherhood in the gospel. So pastors are fathers because through them God brings sons in the gospel. And through them, God teaches and raises. Ministers, those who teach, they are, they are, what do fathers do? Find out what fathers do. They raise, they equip, they prepare. So there is fatherhood there. So I'm, I father people, there are few people that I sit here. I know came in here clueless, knew nothing, had nothing in the Christ, except in the flesh. In one year, they become guardians spiritual guardians they sit here young 
Young men and women that you look at them, you don't know. But they are spiritual beings. They have been turned into different things. Wild in the spirit. That it means to be fat, to father people race. What I'm against in the, when this father, father thing in church is about people seeking call from a man or seeking authority, authenticity and the backing of their call by who they associate with and not from God. A culture that now makes people make, look at ministry as secret cult. And I'm told some ministers, you pay heavily to be accepted as their sons. I'm told it has come to that point because once you're accepted there, it means you have lash network. That is satanism. That is the corruption of the holy gifts of Jesus. Don't forget that the work of Satan in anything is to corrupt. If your marriage is in crisis because there is corruption upon it. If right now you are not in talking terms with your wife, you cannot pray, you don't have peace with your wife or your husband, you are playing the script of Satan. It's not an emotional thing. So don't say you offended me. You offended you years later, days later, weeks later, months later. And you become a monster in your heart while your face is still beautiful. It's because the devil is against that order. Rise to your feet. What God wants to say today, I think, is deeper. Rise to your feet and lift up your two hands. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, expose every form of corruption in my life. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Expose and destroy every oppression of corruption in my life. Of, co of corruption in my life. Expose and destroy. Don't let me go to bed another night with the power of Satan in corruption in my life. Break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your two hands. I speak by the power of the Holy Spirit. The, the spirit that sets the captive free. Let every corruption, satanic agents of corruption, operating in your life and against your life, let them lose their grip now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Lift up to hands. Something must leave you now. Every spell of lust. Every spell of weakness, every spell of corruption, everything that makes you less than the design of the Almighty. I break your hold and I command you to live in the name of Jesus. Be seated. Are you ready for tonight? <laughs> Please open up your heart. Open up your life. Please. Please. The God of power and might. The God of power and might does not save by negotiation. Deliverance does not take place after he has negotiated successfully with what holds you or what has been corrupting your life. It takes place when he says it's true. And when he wants to say it, he sends a man. 
whom he puts his spirit upon us, whom he has rubbed with the oil, the authority to say it, I am convinced, I am aware. For that reason I was born, for that reason I've been spared to stand here. And for that reason I stand here today. That something must leave you today. Amen. That between now and Friday, God will so deal with your life that you will not be recognized by negativity. Yeah. I'm talking about somebody. And that somebody can be anybody and everybody. So the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me. Anointed me. Smeared me with oil. And that oil is to cause. If you now read the next verses, now begins to talk about what the oil is to do. And we will not go into that. The Holy Spirit is telling me, expose them to the mystery. So the Holy Spirit told me to tell you a few things. Pay attention. I'm just going to read through the things the Holy Spirit asked me, put in my spirit as I wrote them down. The anointed. So who is the anointed one? The anointed one is the one that has been smeared, right? That's it. So the word anointed in English is what we say the Christ. It comes from Messiah. In Hebrew, Meshayak. And Meshayak comes from Meshak. I told you anointing means Meshak. Meshak means to rub with oil. So Meshayak, which is translated in English as Messiah, is the one that has been rubbed with oil by the Spirit of God. That's the Messiah. That is translated Christ. So when we say Jesus Christ, what we actually say is that Jesus, the one who has been rubbed with the oil of God because the spirit of God is upon him. Did you get that? That means once he takes you out and puts his spirit upon you and the spirit rubbing you with oil, who are you? At that moment, who are you? You become the anointed. Let me tell you very fundamental truth. Every Christian here, everyone here, put this close to your hide. Hide it in your spirit. The earth was made for the anointed. God made the earth for the anointed. Therefore, until you come into the place of being God's anointed, number one, you cannot represent God. Number two, you cannot be used by God. You cannot be useful to God. You cannot be relevant to God. God did not make the man for the earth for just flesh. Let's look at scripture, Genesis. For those who are my students in the school of the Holy Spirit, present and past, they will know we don't go do any serious teaching until we come to this point. Genesis 1, verse 26, and then we'll go to Genesis 2, verse 7. Then God said, let us make man in our what? Come on, read it with me. Let us, then God said, let us, Come on, read it loud with me. Then God said, Make man in our image according to a likeness. Okay, hold it there. Hold it there. Let them have dominion. I told you something yesterday that one of the corruption and the perversion in Christianity is the obsession with blessing. And blessing as material blessing. It's one of the greatest corruption that has visited the church. Preaching the gospel almost exclusively from the point of view of material blessing. is the perversion of the order of God on earth. It's the turning of the plan of God upside down. See the order of God about the earth. Let us make man in what? Now, what that means is the one who has a nature, 
compliant, who is compatible with us, and the only way the flesh is compatible with God is the Holy Spirit. And when that's, the Holy Spirit comes upon that man, that man is smeared with oil. What is the man smeared with oil to do? According to our likeness, to do what? To have dominion. Once you grasp this, you can never fail. This is the basis of, of creation of man and the salvation of man to rule here. And so every lie that you can live here anyhow after all you will be in heaven is a perversion of the vision of God. The effect of Christianity is on earth, not in heaven. The effect of being saved is not in heaven. It's where? In your family, in your marriage, in your business, in your job, in your offices, in your neighborhood, in your calling. When you go to heaven, you will be irrelevant to the order of heaven. Everything is perfect. You make no contribution. Man was created to dominate, control, have effect, have impact upon where? The earth. If you fail on earth, you failed in destiny. <laughs> what did I say? If you fail on earth, where have you failed? In destiny. You did not come. You are non-entity. You don't exist in the plan of God. Everything, if you read down in verse 28, look at verse 28. Look at verse 28. Then God did what? So that's second. That means blessing is auxiliary. Blessing is given as facility for you to govern. Now you understand why Jesus Christ in Matthew 6, around 33 says, Seek ye first what? The kingdom, the dominion. That's who you are. That's your realm. That's your realm of oppression. Rulership in God. Government in God. And these other things that pagans are looking for will do what? He's taking us back to Genesis. That's the original order. He blessed them. Gave them things. Things to do what? To rule. So Christianity is the restoration of the kingdom. One is born again to rule in God on earth. Blessing is given to him for that. Material things are given for that. So material things only have meaning. In the plan of God, material prosperity have meaning only in the hands of the one who rules in God. So to now look like you come to church so that you will have this. Oh, we are seeking this too. And you know, we are preaching you will have this, you will have this, receive this and all of that. It's a distraction from the purpose. Do you know why you, you are given that? Do you know why you marry? Do you know why you have a house? I mean, a, a wife? Do you know why you have children? Why should you live till tomorrow? Say, God, give me long life. Long life for what? God is the God of purpose. Say it with me. God. Now, John writing says, I wish that you may prosper in all things. As what? Okay. So if your soul doesn't prosper, and people quote that scripture, what does it mean for your soul to prosper? We are talking about spiritual prosperity, which is bearing result in the purpose of God on earth, which is his kingdom. That even as you exercise the dominion of God on earth, 
and prosper in his rulership over things that you may prosper in all other things. Rise to your feet. Just rise to your feet and lift up your two hands. Say, I receive light. I emerge. Lift up your two hands and say, I emerge from darkness. I emerge from death. I emerge from defeat. I emerge into dominion. I emerge into rulership. I emerge into the very purpose of God for my life. In the name of Jesus, lift up your two hands. I speak. That as these words come from my mouth, the yokes of spiritual defeat and lameness, they end now. In the name of Jesus. Spiritual lameness that makes you as a believer walk around spineless, empty, feeling hopeless and useless and helpless. I speak that the spirits of God will come upon you and rub you with the oil of strength and dominion in the name of Jesus. Be seated. Please, do you have understanding into what God is sharing? As I was in his presence this morning, I thought what we were to talk about today had been settled. Told me, go and talk to them about the life of the anointed. And he now turns out his teaching that's too long for today. Say, I'll break it into two tomorrow. We use it to do final preparation. And on Friday, we expect visitation. And you should prepare for it. I said, whoever connects intentionally and prepares, there will be something that will happen in your life. Something will happen. That one, I'm so sure. So sure with every certainty that exists. So the ultimate purpose of God's anointing the spirit coming upon a man is to bring about the administration of God, which is his dominion. Now, see, God said, let them have dominion. But we don't know how is man going to have dominion. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Let's see how God expected man to have dominion. And you'll be able to connect. I made a point you should not forget that the earth was made for the anointed. For the Christ. <laughs> Look at this. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The, the dust of the ground so that man can have basis to operate on the earth. So there's a part of him that came from the earth. Angels are not expected to run government on earth. Angels, before they run government on earth, they must meet a man in flesh and blood. Demons don't operate on earth until there is a man, a woman, flesh from the ground, who will return to the ground, who is available for the devil to use to do his government. That is the order. It cannot be broken. It cannot be broken. But see, after he molded the dust, the dust is what makes you sit on that seat. If an angel comes here, if you see a being, maybe in your vision, an angel sitting, is a way of relating with you because you are physical. So he has to transform into what is familiar to you. But the angel does not have body. It's an appearance to relate. So when the scripture says, I saw in talking about in Judges, in the best of Psalms, and I say, the angel of the Lord came and sat. So that is to relate with the man because the only language you understand normally is a physical language of sitting and walking. When we talk about walking in the angelic spiritual realm, it's different from walking in the physical realm. Okay. But in order to tell the story and make it tangibly understood or ununderstandable to the man of flesh and blood, the angel has to assume 
as you. Okay. And the scripture says, and he breathed into his nostrils. What happened? He breathed into his nostrils. The what? The breath of life. And what happened? This is the first experience of anointing on earth. Now, the spirit came into that flesh, came upon that flesh. The effect took place immediately. What took place here, the scripture says, he became what? A living being. Let's talk a little bit about what it means to be a living being. Living being means active being. Operational. This speaker just lying down here, you cannot say it's a living being. Does not move from this place. Needs to be moved. And it cannot govern. So the man who has to have dominion, he came alive. That life was the life of God. So that when he marries, he marries in the blueprints of God. Whatever he does, so he's a living being. Living, only God is called the living God. So in the order of God. By the spirit that came upon him, the same way, when anointing comes upon a man by the Holy Spirit, he begins to do on earth what only God does. Only God can heal somebody miraculously. So when the Spirit comes upon you, you come alive, you become a living being in the order according to the oil that will make you do on earth what only God can do, which is what we call dominion. Oh, come on. Come on, receive it. Yeah. Receive understanding. Yeah. Let's not stay there, let's move forward. So that is the first experience of anointing. The spirit came and something happened. What happened is that one became a, a specific being. A being that was a living being. Which means he could make things, he could change things, he could rule things, he could order things. Why? He is living. He can organize things according to the image and likeness of God. So he orders things in family according to the image and likeness of God. He orders things in business according to the image and likeness of God. By the spirit that has come into him upon him, he has been smeared to do things as God will do it in order to reproduce on earth the government of God, which is why God wanted a man in his image and what? Like so that his reign in heaven will be established on earth. That's the purpose of man. And that's the only reason Christ came. That's the only reason that Christ came, to restore that. So that man can have the spirit again and reproduce the order of God here on earth as he lives. So that God will reign in the affairs of men as he wanted it. So, from the moment Adam and Eve sinned against God, what actually happened is that the anointing left, the Christ. So, Adam ceased to be the anointed. And at that moment, he could no longer order things. Things had power to order him. At that moment, he became a slave to Satan. The devil that fell... Now order men, order marriage, order how children will be, no longer godly seed, order business. That business we must serve Satan in order to rise to the highest order. Order politics, order academics, order different influence and infiltrate every sphere. Every time God wanted to have an intervention, He sent somebody. And that person will come by the Spirit. Look at Moses by the anointing, by the Spirit. From there to the kings, to the priests, we don't have time to go into details. Every priest had to be anointed. Every king had to be anointed. Every prophet had to be anointed. And these three spheres are the spheres of God's government on earth. 
From that moment, everyone that was anointed, Moses was anointed. He was a friend of God, but he was not perfect. He did not carry the fullness of the anointing. Aaron was anointed, but he caused the first idolatry. Made the first idol. Everyone that had been anointed, Saul, the first anointed king, failed. David, the second one that produced the line of the Christ, failed also. Solomon, the next in line, established an, um, uh, the temple and also built altars to Satan and caused the whatever is happening in Israel now is traced to the time of Solomon. Because after him, Jeroboam rebelled and there was the northern kingdom and the abomination there. And the sin that came in for the north to be swept away into captivity. And for the southern kingdom eventually, and for the temple to be destroyed. Until now, nothing is the same again. So that means in the Old Testament, anointing was in partial, in bits and pieces. Because the fullness of anointing had departed in Adam. The Christ is called the last Adam. Jesus is called the last Adam. And Jesus is called the Christ. Jesus Christ, the anointed. We don't have time to go into scriptures. Let's say a few things. Let's just say a few things. Let's just say a few things. Just few things, few things. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm almost done. We have done the prayers. Just going to make our declaration and expect miracle signs and wonders and we'll come back tomorrow. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. And so it is written. As I speak now, somebody's life has been turned around. I see somebody that was buried from waist down. And it looks like from your waist down, you always feel numb. And what I see is that you've been buried from waist down. And sometimes you just feel numbed as I speak. But the one who said he will raise, you are raised up in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And the other person, I see somebody with, I think it should be right chest. You just have chest pain, but it's just at the right side. Just at the right side. The lump, heavy thing that has been inside weighing you down is gone in the name of Jesus Amen. just stand up wherever you are just lay your hand wherever you need the touch of God just feel there is anointing for healing instantly here just feel there is there's a heavy presence of anointing for healing just tap into it just tap into it just tap into it just tap into it. <sighs> Open yourself for it. And I, uh, I'm waiting for you. God is lifting an evil garment. Somebody wears a black garment. The anointing of rejection. The spell of witchcraft that dresses you in black. And you walk into a place and you are suddenly rejected and it just looks like you smell foul. That garment, just lift up a trunk, that garment is being removed from you. Yeah. Wrong signs. Your face giving wrong signal. I'm and people misinterpreting you. People always misinterpret you because your face is giving wrong signal. Lift up your two hands and close your eyes. And I, don't sing. I don't want you to sing. Don't be distracted. Just close your eyes and lift up your two hands and say, God, deal with me. Don't be distracted singing. So just say, Lord, deal with me. Deal with me. And who is this one that I see with bra? The bra that you wear. Just 
just looks like wherever you go to you are just naked all that is on you is this bra that's what I see evil smearing evil smearing that communicates foulness to people they approach you only for a particular reason they don't see anything good apart from Ramondo Tomalianda Sikatolia Masito Sandakato the spiritual tattoo around you Rando Tomale Rando Tomale Kata what is this ugly thing around your head the hand of God is taking them off the hand of God is taking them off just lift up your tongue and say Lord deal with me deal with me say Lord I'm ready for your dealing I'm ready for your dealing Mm. Oh, chains are taken from the hands. Chains are taken from the feet. Addiction has ended. Addiction. Somebody's always seeing water. You are walking on the road, but you are seeing water. And you are seeing things in the water while you walk on the road. Somebody is always in fear. You are in the midst of people, but you are always scared. Let her go. Let him go. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. Close your eyes and raise your hands. You don't need what God is doing in another person's life. You just, oh, something is dropping from somebody. I see things dropping from your mouth. I see somebody with a sword trying to fight another ugly being that has a longer sword. Somebody has a problem with somebody who belongs to evil power and you are fighting in the flesh. And since the quarrel began, things began to go wrong. Randata. Separation, 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 separation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. The hand of God is upon somebody. And something like stone. You have been carrying something that makes you feel heavy in your head. And for a long time. Just looks like your head is always hot. And heavy. You feel tired so easily. Rando topele kata. Masi ando topele. Lift up your two hands. It's taken of you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 And I. Lift up your two hands. I'm desperate for you. And I I'm lost without In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, be seated. Just try and be seated. 
so heavy and beautiful. Let me just conclude this in the next five minutes. And then we dedicate our lives to God and renew our consecration. And we go, please prepare for tomorrow and try and come early. We we'll have to start teaching early and allow God to pour his, his oil upon us. Because from tomorrow we expect oil. It's coming so close. What God speaks about is what he does. Availability in the spirit is created by the word. So when you speak something as somebody ordained and given right by God to speak, as you keep speaking, it is available. Because God does everything by the word. The administration of God is the word. First Corinth, give me permission for five minutes. Let's wrap this up so that tomorrow we can take off from somewhere. First Corinth chapter 15 verse 4. If I be patient with me, just be patient. Be patient. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became what? A living being compatible with God to order things. It takes the living to do things. The dead cannot do anything. Dominion is in the realm of the living. So he became a living being by the spirit to rule, to govern, to order things, to shift. That is why he had to name things. Whatever he named, God confirmed them. Because he had the capacity of making things in specific ways, which is dominion. When you walk in dominion, things don't shape you, you shape things. You walk into an office, it doesn't shape you. There's a person who walks into the office, everybody else has been failing in that office. And the person arrives and things turn around. Man was made to shape things, which is called dominion, not to be shaped. So even in your life as a Christian, things shape you. Where you live shapes you. Things give you a particular shape. And so, okay, Banton, why are you like this? Is it not marriage? Is it not the man I'm married? Is it not where I'm working? I am like this. That means you become the consequence of things. Dominion means things become the consequence of you. And it takes a living being to produce consequences from things. Decide things. If things decide, sickness decides what you eat. Sickness decides how long you can sleep. He said, I cannot sleep up to two hours in the night. Oh, that's my problem. And you are a believer. It means you don't walk in dominion. You decide. You decide. Say decision. It takes the king to decide. In the nation, the president can decide. He woke up as he was sworn in. He says, oil subsidy is removed. Decision. Whatever result it has produced, we are seeing it. But he decided. Because you operate at the level of political dominion. So in the spiritual dominion, it means you have power in the spiritual place to affect things around you. You decide. This is how my children will turn out. You decide. This is what this investment, this business, if God has given it to me, this is how it will be. This office has been given to me by God. This will be the result of this office. It is not a subject of prayer. It is a subject of dominion. Dominion is not prayer. Dominion is life. You don't move things because you pray. Prayer is the breathing of the man. The spirit man breathes in fellowship with God to stay alive. And when you are alive, you do things. There are people fast and pray 100 years. Things are shaping them. They are running away from homes and sleeping in churches. Welcome. 
The difference between the first man who could shape things and the last man. See, the scripture says the last Adam became what? Life-giving. That means the last Adam did not come just to shape things. <laughs> now, pay. this is the last point we'll make. Please, tell somebody, pay attention. Please tell, tell somebody, just receive this one. Jesus Christ did not come in the order of Adam just to shape things. He came to give life to those who will shape things. Oh, you must receive this. Say, I must get this. Once you get this, I'll let you go. I don't even need to pray. The last Adam is life-giving spirit. That means the spirit that came upon Adam as a result of which he could do what? Shape things. His spirit came upon Adam and he came alive as one who could turn things around. Shape things and direct things. Jesus Christ came as the one who gives life. So that those he gives life to can return to the garden and restore things. The unfinished business of Adam. <laughs> this is a mystery of Christianity. So anybody who teaches you that once you are born again, you are saved forever and whatever you do does not matter. He knows half. He does not know much. Because it is in your doing that you shape things. It is in your doing in marriage, in raising children, your doing in politics, your doing in your career, that you either return to the garden to correct and shape things or perpetuate the disorder of the old man. And anyone who perpetuates the disorder of the old man is a man in the flesh. So being born again is not a doctrinal thing that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the evidence of it is that the spirit rests upon you and smears you and you are enabled to go back to the garden. Whether the garden is in your marriage, you shape things and people, somebody comes, an angel watches. This is what God wanted on earth when he said let us make man in our image and likeness in the way you shape your children in the way you shape you are wealthy but your wealth does not shape you you shape wealth to be compatible with the government of God and demons recognize this is the order of God on earth that is the proof that you are born again that is the proof that the life-giving spirit has given life to you. And that is done by the Holy Spirit. So, let's end with this scripture. John chapter 1, verses 11, 12. This is the last scripture. And this will take us from tomorrow. I'll give you a secret. Tomorrow I'll show you a secret of the anointed. The secret of the anointed. That's what we'll share tomorrow. That secret will unlock what will happen on Friday. Thank you for being patient. He came to his own. And his own did not do what? Did not receive him. Come on, read it with me. He came. He came to his own. Read everyone. He came. And his own did not receive him. Next verse. But as many as received him. What happened? To them, remember, the last Adam is life-giving. Those who receive him, he does not give them cars. That's not what he gives. Those who receive him, he does not give them land. Otherwise, anyone who has car and land will have what he has. He gives them something. What does he give them? Right to do what? To be God begotten, the first begotten on earth, the first experience 
of one being begotten on earth is Adam. Adam was begotten by God. Jesus is called the first begotten. The first because he was the experience of Adam. He was the spirit that came upon Adam. When Adam turned away from God, he's the one who left Adam. He's the one who came upon prophets and they became prophets. He's the same life-giving spirit that came in the Son of God that Mary gave birth to. So, what is happening, this is fulfilling what Paul is talking about, being the last Adam, being life-giving. Life, he gave them, say he gave them. What does he give them? Right, right means permission to use all the powers of God on earth. Right is different from power. Power is ability to do things. Right is the permission to do things. Ability belongs to God. Power and might belongs to who? To God. So what he gave to the man who accepts him is the right to use the power and the ability of God on earth to shape things. Oh, glory to God. 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 He gave them right to become what? Children of God. To those who believe in his name. Next verse. Next verse. Who were born not of what? Not of what? Not the will of your father in the Lord. <laughs> Not the will of a pastor. Not because your father was a bishop or your father was the elder or the person who gave the first land upon which you should build. But the will, but of God. And these are the people that he said who accepted him. He told John the Baptist, said, I came baptizing you with water for repentance. But one coming. That is greater than me. He will baptize you with what? Holy Spirit and fire. Glory to God. And he told the apostles in Acts chapter 1. Can we see verse 6? We are ending. Sorry, I broke my promise. I said, oh, that will be the... Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him saying, Lord, will you, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Um, and he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive what? When the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall do what? Be, my wit be witnesses to me. That means you shall reproduce my experience. You shall reproduce my order. And he did another thing that surprised them. The works that I do, you shall do. But greater works shall you do. Now, how will Jesus on earth say that those who would believe in him will do greater works? Because he did not come to do works. He came to raise people who will do works. Rise to your feet. <laughs> Rise to your feet. Come on. Rise to your feet. I'm sorry. Many of you, this is not too, no, it's not too much. Say, I, am, I have grown. Lift up our two hands. Just rise and lift up our two hands. So the, when Jesus Christ said, I came, I said, those who believe in me, I shall do the works that I do. But greater works shall they do because I go to my Father. So it goes to the same order. He's life-giving spirit. He comes to make one alive. Not just to do what he did. Because that was not his mission. His mission to, was to raise the one who will shame the devil. Because the devil was already annoyed that Jesus did what he did. But he said, I will raise somebody who will do greater than me. Because the whole order of Satan was that man was to be made higher than angels. So Jesus Christ came to So He didn't say those who are bishops will do greater works. He didn't say apostles who do. He said those who do what? Who believe in me. It means in marriage, whatever it takes for you to make it beautiful like God wanted it, he has given you permission at the level of greater works. It means 
wherever you are is the garden of God for you and you are given mandate for what? greater works so our generation is the generation not of prosperity not of financial prosperity but the generation of what? greater works prosperity serves you because you are operating in greater works so that things that people fast and pray for are the accessories attending to you in the office of what? greater works that means a mother is permitted to raise a dead child just by believing in Jesus a wife is permitted on phone to raise the dead husband greater works greater works that's it eyes closed <laughs> eyes closed hands lifted I hope God will give us time tomorrow to experience greater works oh father thank you say thank you father for hiding these things from the learned but revealing them to me say I accept this say Lord I don't take this for granted in Jesus name okay so in this place listen to me while eyes are closed in the next five minutes we are done we're going to make consecration to Jesus for wh whoever is here that has not yet accepted him and has not yet been given this life of God to shape things and govern in the order of God you'll be given opportunity as you accept Jesus an encounter will take place in your life and for every child of God, today becomes an opportunity for you to renew that decision, your will. And then go higher. Say, Lord, I dedicate myself and consecrate myself today as your child unto you for greater works. I can no longer stay in the place of works, of looking for who helps me. Take me into the place of doing greater things. Oh, glory is breaking out in this place all eyes closed if you are in this place and you know you have not yet been saved in the salvation of Christ you have not yet been given right you don't have peace with God you don't have a witness in your spirit of salvation and if you have been here you have given your life to Christ but you could become careless and lost lost things in the presence of God lost the presence, lost the joy of the presence, this is the season of restoration, if you are a child of God here reconsecrate say I give you again it is not prayer, it is not a time to pray Adam and Eve used their will, God gave them free will, but they used it against God, he said we want to be like God equal sin is using your will to do whatever you like salvation begins when you can turn that will from yourself from sin and turn it to God once you turn your will say Lord I turn from sin turn from living for myself living in the flesh I turn from living as I, I wish I turn from the things that displease you. Just speak those words. Say, Lord, I turn from things. Everyone here say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your mercy in Christ. By my will, intentionally, knowingly, I turn from former ways. I turn from my personal sins and from generational sins. I turn to you in repentance. I cannot save myself for I am flesh and blood. I recognize your son Jesus Christ is my salvation. Therefore, I confess my sins as I turn my heart to you. At this point, are there specific things you want to talk to God about? For somebody 
who had lost the peace of God, maybe you had gone back to things you had forsaken, can you make confession in your and reconcile with God? For a child of God, can you renew your commitment to holiness? Say, Lord, I renew my de dedication to holiness. Oh. Scripture says when we confess our sins, he's, he's just. He forgives. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. I want to hear it everywhere. Lord Jesus Christ. You are the forgiveness of the Father. I accept you. You are the life of the Father. I accept you. You are the salvation of the Father. I accept you as my life, my history, my past, my present, my future. Having accepted you, I believe I have been forgiven. I believe I have been changed. Send your spirit upon me. Give me the enablement to serve the Father's glory. Just lift up your two hands for a short while. Ask him to send his spirit. Lord Jesus, your word says those who believe, those who accept, to them you give rights. Give them rights. Give everyone here right. Everyone who has made this confession in true spirit and spirit and truth. Give right. Let the encounter to ha that happened to a 22 year old boy 33 years ago. Let that encounter happen in his soul. Break your way through. Take over. Take over emotions. Break yokes of addiction. Lesbian yokes, homosexual yokes, pornographic yokes, betting yokes, lustful yokes, the yokes of stealing, of lies, of perversion. Ah, la shatter. Feel everyone with your life. I'm going to pray for you for one minute. And I will ask you to call the name Jesus just seven times. At the end of it, the unfathomable miracle of God will take place in your life. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Lift up your two hands. Expect something that only God can do to take place in your life in the next two minutes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I have stood here to declare your counsel. You put your word in your mouth and put your spirit upon me and smear me with all that I'm able to do. I don't have any contribution except all that Christ has offered. That's my life. That's my faith. That's my foundation. That's my all. On the basis of the finished work and because you called me and because I'm here to reveal your kingdom, Lord, proof that I stand here and it is your name I call. That it is Jesus who paid the price. That there is nothing that Jesus did not pay for. As this one mentioned that name that you gave before he was born. And the name you gave him after he rose from the dead. So that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to, the, to your glory. Proof in the case of everyone here that you gave him that name. And at that name, every knee, including knees of things, principalities, and powers, kingdoms, and yokes that are against them. And every tongue, including tongues that are accusing and condemning and speaking destruction, let them bow. And let incredible miracle of salvation, of healings, miracles, signs, and wonders in every kind of ways that your children need. Let it happen to prove your glory and give glory to Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to shout it with all your strength and believe as you shout one, things from heaven are coming in and things from hell are leaving you. What? Shout Jesus! Two, 
shout Jesus. Three, shout Jesus. Jesus five shout Jesus we are getting close doors are open for the heavenly visitation from God and doors are open for everything of death, sickness, and hell. Satan to leave you. Six, shout Jesus. By the name of Jesus, this seven times, the finality of a situation has come. Seven, shout Jesus! Keep shouting, keep shouting, keep shouting, keep shouting, keep shouting, keep shouting. It is letting you go. It is leaving you. Sickness is going. Cancer is gone. Cancer is gone. Weakness is gone. Lameness is gone. Blindness is gone, deafness is gone, dumbness is gone, skin cancer is gone, leukemia is gone, yokes of shame, go, 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 go. does not save by argument. Lift up your two hands. God does not save by negotiation. God saves by power and might. As Christ is Lord, He has proven it in your life that there is no negotiation. It is done. Go ahead and celebrate. It is done. Celebrate. It is done. Celebrate, celebrate. Shout, it is done. Turn around, tell three, four people it's done. Go ahead, do what you could not do, it's done. It is 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 done. In the name of Jesus Christ.